going on everybody it's your favorite auntie mo and we are back for another episode review of love and hip-hop hollywood this is season six episode 13 paparazzi before we get into the review if you have not done so just yet go ahead and subscribe to my channel let me know what you think about this video with a thumbs up or thumbs down and then hit that notification bell so you will know whenever i upload new content y'all this episode of love and hip-hop hollywood First of all, wasn't a whole lot that went on in this episode. The whole thing was staged and acting when none of it really reality dog on TV. And it was irritating as hell. It was irritating. So, I'm not going to spend long on this review. I feel a little sophisticated tonight, so a bitch got some Merlot. Mm, Y'all know I'm a ratchet auntie. I need my Moscato, but it was a gift. And who am I to turn down some good ass wine, okay? So hopefully y'all are ready for the review because I'm ready to give it to you. So let's get right on up into it. All right, y'all. So this episode picked up where the last one left off. We got Tierra, uh, Tierra Marie. She done came into the house because, you know, Paris and Zells were at their apartment chilling, whatever. She comes over to the house saying that her apartment's going to be ready in a few weeks. So in the meantime, she's going to be staying with them. And I didn't know her and Zells were like real life cousins. Let me know what the blood relation is because, you know, everybody cousins. I got cousins watching this right now. Let me know what the blood relation is. You know what I'm saying? But she said her apartment going to be ready for in a few in a few weeks. So she's going to stay over there at the house with them, right? So I don't like how Paris and Zells started going in on Tierra Marie. Yes, we know the girl got problems. We know she just got out of jail. You know she was driving drunk on three wheels down the road. But um, it's no secret Tierra Marie done had her issues with the drinking and stuff like that. I feel like... When you get around your family and your real friends, that should be a safe space for you to go to where you're not going to get ridiculed, you're not going to get made fun of, you're not going to get people teasing you, making jokes about you, and nothing like that. Soon as she walked in, Zell's is like, hold on, let me get my money because I know you owe people. Let me pat you down, make sure you ain't brought nothing back from prison with you. And she's just like, wow, really? You know that's already a touchy subject for her. You know that's embarrassing for her. And the first thing you do is make her feel bad about that. And I didn't think that was right. I didn't think that was right. It got to the point to where, you know, they start Started upsetting her because Paris and Zell's both are like, well, we love you and we want you to love you more than we love you and we want you to do better for yourself and we don't want to see you in this situation. Yes, I get that and I would feel that if they were coming from a real true friend, but quite honestly, I don't feel like Zell, even though Zell's just can't vote, I don't think he really there there for you. I mean, he's there. Yeah, physically he's there, but they're there for you emotionally, spiritually, mentally, like you really need people to be there. I don't feel like Paris and they damn sure wouldn't be the, fan, the friends that I would go to if I was going through some shit like that because they're the type that's going, as soon as you leave, baby, they're going to talk about you. They're going to talk about you like they don't know you and like they know you. And I just didn't think that was right. Broke the girl down, made her cry and all of that. So Zell says he's happy that she's there because now he can keep his eyes on her. For what? Just for you to go back and run her business whenever she pisses you off and does something to make you mad? Oh, child, no. But you know what I'm saying? They hug it out or whatever. And that's another thing I was thinking of. It's like Zell's. You're going to be owing parents half the rent in a minute and a doggone in your anyway. So why are you sitting up here going up? But you know what? That's neither here nor there. Moving on from that, child. Y'all, this next storyline was dumb as hell to me. I said it before and I feel like it's... Uh, so Yo-Yo talks with her daughter Tiffany. They talk about the whole thing that happened at the baby shower. Yo-Yo says she feels like she's being disrespectful. She already got a lot on her plate. She got the school of Yo-Yo hip hop. She trying to get her album back on and popping after 10 years. Plus she trying to keep herself relevant in the industry as it is. Plus, bitch, do you work? I don't know if you or your sister work because she was making it seem like she takes care of all of y'all. Plus, she going to be taking care of the grandbaby that ain't even got here just yet. And you just being disrespectful. Now, I, I will say, I don't know if this was a for real storyline. This is makeup or what. But her daughter do seem, she seemed like a little bitch. I'm, I'm just calling her I see her. I'm just going to call her I see her. She seemed like a little rude ass bitch. You want to know why? Because I can be a little rude ass bitch. Real recognized real. She can be a, she's a real bitch. And I'm just saying it because 
I'm a bitch and I can notice that from her. You know what I'm saying? So she tells her basically, I got a lot on my plate. When I come in and I'm pissed off, you should just try to understand and just hell, just move on out my damn way. Stop questioning me and asking me why I'm in a bad goddamn mood because anybody can get it right now. And so they hug it out. She ain't mad no damn much. I was just like, oh my God. Yo, yo, you really allowed them, you really allowed Mona Scott to bring you on this platform just for you to be arguing with your daughter. Girl. Drew takes April to this house. He has her blindfolded. He wants to show her how much he appreciates her. He wants to take the load off of her because she's done so much for him. So he wants to make it easy on her. So he takes her to this nice, beautiful house. Bomb ass view. Nice house. Reveals the house to her and then says, I want you to move with me. She then starts giving this little crying speech about all the reasons why she loves him and she trusts him and why they should be together. She says something like these last three and a half years. So have y'all been together for three and a half years or like, because you know what, quite honestly, you know what, I'm going to be, I don't give a shit no more. <laughs> We've already established the fact that they were lying. They've been fucking. We've been know that they been fucking. And now it's out there. So don't nobody care no more. So... <laughs> what we about to eat? <laughs> Princess is at the baby store with her beautiful little China baby doll. Melody, love, Norwood. She is so gorgeous. She's so beautiful. She was at the baby store with her. And then Paris comes to meet up. I, are y'all even really friends in real life? I mean, y'all just, you know, I don't want to complain. But it just seemed like this whole episode... I don't believe nothing in it. I didn't. I don't believe nothing about this episode. I felt like everything about this episode was staged, was nothing for real about it, none of that. Like, when Paris showed up, you know, she showed her her baby bump, and she was like, ah, surprise, she's six months now. It's like, that shows you right there, that ain't even your real home, girl. The only reason why you letting her know is because y'all co-workers, and you got to film the scene together. Like, where your real ass home girls at? Like, I said, I girl, it was just too damn much. Too much. So, Princess um, tells her that, you know, she wanted to keep it a secret because last time she wanted, she didn't want to say Monique's name, but last time somebody had put it out there that um, Brandy was her surrogate, which we all know was Monique's. But Paris even says, yeah, I'm glad she didn't say nothing to me because I'd have told Zells and Zells would have told everybody because y'all ain't real. Y'all not real friends. You, I wonder if you and Zells are even loyal to each other. You know, things make you go, hmm. But anywho, um, you know, she says that she's still mad at Ray. Ray is trying to make it up to her because she's pissed off about this little photo shoot they were supposed to do. And he came fresh up off of Vegas with red drawers and a red shirt on. Didn't even have a white tee and the jeans on like he was supposed to have. And she just wants him to be more present and be there for the baby. Okay. So, Paris is like, girl, look here, just let you know, he was in Vegas the whole time. He was working. He bought us some little weed or whatever. We was just sitting over there at the house chilling. He wasn't up to nothing. She don't care. Princess like, girl, um, I don't care. I'm still pissed off at him. Paris is like, girl, get over it. Then, <laughs> Princess gonna ask Paris, when you gonna have some babies? Baby, not now, never. <laughs> she ain't never have a now, not a baby. No, she's not. So Zells ends up meeting up with Jason Lee, right? Of course, you know, April used to work for Jason Lee. He wants to go to meet with him to spill the tea that he's got videos and he's got pictures of Zells, I'm sorry, of, of April and Fizz, basically them being together. Now, Jason is even like, okay, I thought y'all were cool. Why are you spilling this tea to me? Zell says he's pissed off because he's seen that Barney B and April were hanging together in an Instagram story. And because she feels, uh, he feels like she's not being loyal to him, letting her know about their relationship. So basically, all bets are off. And so he shows him the video, shows him the pictures and all that. And so, of course, Zell's like he said, he needs some money. So Jason's like, okay, so what I got to do to get these pictures? And he's like, well, you know what? Rent is coming up fast. So I guess you're going to cut him a little check or something to get this tea. But y'all, again, this is old goddamn news. We done already figured this shit out. What they putting out, what they showing right now on Love & Hip Hop, 
we done already seen that a couple months ago. So now that we know it and you confirmed it, confirmed it, what we already know, don't nobody care to know nothing no more. It's like, okay, moving on from that. So Yo-Yo takes Apple Watch to go meet with this dude named Big Mike, right? He's supposed to be some kind of, I don't know if he's a, ta a talent scout or he's a branding manager, whatever he is. He's the guy that can get you connected so that you can build your brand, right? So, of course, Yo-Yo wants Apple to meet with him because she wants to, like, change her image, get her out there, work on herself, right? Now... Off top, when they get to the meeting, Yo-Yo apologizes to him because I guess they were supposed to have met before. Apple Watch forgot about it. Yo-Yo thinks maybe she was just drunk fucked up somewhere and she just blew it off and forgot about it totally. What together? I don't know what it was. But Big Mike is basically like, well, I work with Chris Brown. I work with Justin Bieber. whoop de whoop yada, yada, yada. And so I just want to know more about you. Who is Apple Watch, right? And so she begins to tell him who she is and that she wants to be known more and more than just the stripper and a girl that can do the booty tricks, you know, the boot scoot across the floor and all of that, right? So he asks her, you know, I want you to, you know, tell me about this. He shows her one of her lives. And if y'all follow Apple Watch on Instagram, you already know. Homegirl gets drunk and gets on that live and tells it like a T.I. mother loving is. She don't care who you are. <laughs> she don't care what's going on, baby. She gets on that live, drunk, high, whatever it is, and she just, she just talks. She just goes in. And so Apple is like, well, you know, that's me. You know, I like to talk a lot of shit. That's just who I am. And so basically, like, he's telling her that I try to present you to other companies, but these particular companies don't want to work with you because you need to clean up your image. And so then he starts to talk to um, Yo-Yo and it's like, this little piece of hair is getting on my fucking nerves. And it's like, um, basically, I don't want to ruin my reputation by putting my name on her and then I don't want to ruin whatever reputation that you and I have talking about Yo-Yo because, you know, what if she gets in there? Basically, he's trying to say, what if this bitch gets in there and she starts wilding? Like, I don't want my name on that shit. So, um... Y'all gonna have to fix this until, you know, you can clean up your act as of right now. Excuse me. As of right now, you know, I can't work with you. And what I didn't like is you, if you knew from Jump Street that you weren't gonna work with that girl, you could have sent that bitch a text. You could have sent her an email. You could have sent that bitch a smoke signal. I'd have been mad. Apple Watch handled it real good. She was like, you know, I understand, you know, and, and I'll work on that. I'll change that. But, um... Yo, yo, you being her mentor, like, I didn't like how she came in. My bad, you know, we missed the last meeting because I think she got her, her wires crossed or whatever. Like, no, girl, uh-uh, mm-mm. It's like it was a no-go from the beginning. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, yo, yo, you being her mentor, you, po yo, you God, why you got to bring that shit up? You can apologize to that man off camera or something. You know what I'm saying? But... Again, like I said about him, Big Mike, and then it was just something about Big Mike. I was just, it was just something very off-putting to me that I just really wasn't feeling about him. So, you know what I'm saying? Apple ain't gonna get to work with no branded companies right now. She's gonna have to keep booty scooting across the ground to figure some shit out. Lord. <sighs> Prinky and Ray J meet up to do a, a redo pregnancy reveal photo shoot, which I don't even know. I think this was probably the practice to the practice to the to the real one, because this wasn't even the pictures that they put out when she revealed that she was pregnant again. But anyways, Ray J and his big old Mr. Lover Lover belly out there, they taking their pictures. He once again apologizes for, you know, the whole thing that happened when he got back from Vegas and messing up the last photo shoot. She just wants him to be more present and be aware and to just be there and be a just, uh, I just want you to be aware of what's going on and just like to just know and just to be more present. She always got damn whining about something. I love Pranky because she's from ATX, Austin, Texas. Shout out to you, princess. But girl, like y'all, tonight's, I mean, last night's episode, it was just, it wasn't good. Thank God I got this Merlot to get me through that bitch. So it's the night of the listening party that Mickey Monday is having, right? Child, when I tell you that old empty ass listening party, it was like 10 people there, including the, the castmates. It was like anytime you can see straight through a crowd, but ain't nobody there. Ain't nobody there. 
And then he said he wanted to have a skating party. Then he wanted to have a pajama jammy jam. So he had a pajama skate party. In an empty ass skating ring with 10 people there at a listening party. Child. Y'all gonna dismiss me with that bullshit. But um, Mickey was there. Of course, Slick was there. Booby. Booby. We're gonna get to Booby big head ass in a minute. Mr. Ray was there. Tierra Marie was there. Zell's Paris. Monice was there. And Jason Lee was there, right? So, everybody's sitting back. They mixing, they mingling, whoop de whoop yada, yada, yada. Next thing you know, Booby come rolling his ass on in there. He's like, oh, so, Jason, you just dropping tea left and right. Y'all see what happened? Y'all didn't see on Hollywood Unlocked? He shows the phone to Mickey Monday. See, I told you that's what it was. I told you. And see, now, that kind of got me feeling some type of way. I'm low-key pissed because I asked them what it was. And if they friends, they be laying head to toe if they were friends. Booby, go set your ass down somewhere. Booby, don't nobody care what you got going on. What music you got coming out? What team you finna go scout for? Booby, you just doing too much and you're not doing enough. You're doing too much of what you're doing. And it's too damn much, right? Just, ugh, just too much. Child, next thing you know... <laughs> Fizz and April walk in. Mr. Ray, child, Mr. Ray look like Festa Adams with that big ski ball head and that robe he had on. He looked like Festa Adams. Just got back from the damn Bermuda Triangle or some shit. He's like, I don't mean to be messy, but um, this was just released on Hollywood Unlocked. Shows April and Fizz the pictures that Zells took of them in the bed. Shows them the video of her between his legs and all of that. And she's like, okay, well, yeah, we're still friends, but... Here go Fizz with this old bullshit. We just didn't feel the need to tell anybody at the time. Like, we've been together, but we didn't feel like that was anybody's business to say we in a comfortable space. Cha, now, before Fizz and April had came, Monique got pissed when she seen that shit, and she went off to the bathroom. At this point, when April and Fizz are there, Monique comes back from the bathroom. Then that's when Paris and Zells started with the messy shit. So, uh... You hear they say they together, they finna have babies and they finna have kids and all this and they finna get married. And oh, April, you didn't tell Monique when you were sleeping with her baby daddy. Oh, Monique, she said she didn't feel like she needed to tell you nothing because they been together. Oh, April, you didn't feel like you should have Fizz, what about you? I felt like that was too goddamn much. Too much. You bitches ain't had nothing else better to do but to try to get some shit started. And plus, they knew... They know that Mo Monice ain't wrapped too tight. She not. She gonna go off. And I think that's another reason why they kept egging that on because they knew Monice was gonna go off. And that's exactly what happened. She starts to get pissed. She's basically like, her thing is, you lied to me the whole time. If it wasn't nobody else that you could keep it real in a hundred with, you could have kept it real with me. Like she feels like I'm your baby mama. April, you be all up in my face, kicking and laughing and cool with me. This whole time, you both lied. And then her thing is, you had my son lying. You had him saying not to say anything and to keep this a secret and all this. Monique, I mean, Monique does have a dog in this fight. Yes. I feel like she has every reason to be upset because y'all was on some sneak shit. But then again, like I said, we all knew it. It is what it is. Now that we know about it, can we just move the fuck on from it now? I'm just saying. Let's just move on from it. You know what, y'all? That was the end of the episode right there. On the next episode, it looks like Monice and April are going to get into it because April has the nerve to question Monice. Why do you need to have communication with Fizz? Why do y'all need to talk? Y'all are not friends. Bitch, and she didn't fuck you to have that baby either. Uh. But like my girl Jay Lee Corner say, I digress. Hmm. If I missed anything, which I'm sure I did because I wanted to get this through this review quick because I'm tired, I'm ready to wash this makeup off, take this bra off, and take my ass to bed. Please don't forget to comment down below and let me know. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Now, um, IT Mo will see you in the next video. <laughs> I'm tired as hell, y'all. Peace out. What's up, y'all? Do me a favor and share the video. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think and um, hit that notification button so you will be up to date when I upload my latest videos. 
Arrava!